Standing by the vaccine that's been the driving force behind rollout, the Prime Minister today on a visit to an AstraZeneca plant in Macclesfield. Following our exclusive report last night that regulators are considering putting age restrictions on the vaccine, Boris Johnson was keen to stress getting the jab, if called, is very important. I think that the best thing people should do is, is, is look at what the, uh, the MHRA say, our independent regulator, that's, that's why we have them, that's why they're, uh, they're independent. And their advice to people is to uh, you know, keep going out there, get your, get your jab, get your second jab. But in the last hour, we understand that the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine trial in children has been paused over possible links to blood clots. Nicola Sturgeon earlier today mentioning that the Moderna vaccine has arrived in the country and the National Clinical Director in Scotland reassuring the public that they are keeping an eye on AstraZeneca developments. So we do have to be careful, particularly as we move down the age groups where the benefits perhaps shift a little, but we have very clever scientists looking at that for us and we'll let you know as soon as they change. While publicly the position of the vaccine regulators in the UK and Europe is the benefits far outweigh the risks the MHRA say they're doing a thorough and detailed review with no decision yet made. Privately among epidemiologists, discussions are being had about whether this is true of younger age groups. A week ago, I was quite sceptical that the, there would be a link between the AstraZeneca and the cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, CVST. With information that's come out since then, I think the likelihood that there is an association is much more strong than it was a week ago. So what would be your message to people watching in their 30s or 40s who are potentially worried about taking the AstraZeneca vaccine? I think at the moment, people in that age group aren't being called up for their vaccines unless they're suffering from some other pre-existing disease. If they are, then it is very much in their interest to go and have the vaccine because if they do get the infection, they're more at risk of getting severe disease and dying than uh, other people in their age group. This is where the Prime Minister got his AstraZeneca vaccine just a few weeks ago. Then he was urging people to get vaccinated if asked, and he's done the same again today. But that hasn't stopped questions being asked about the link between AstraZeneca and blood clots. That is being investigated by the European Medicines Agency and also the WHO. And that doesn't just have implications for here in the UK and in Europe, but in developing countries as well, where AstraZeneca is the only vaccine around. Here in India, they're keeping all the vaccine supplies they can as cases reached a record-breaking high of over 100,000 in a single day. Night curfews from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. are being extended across the country. Back in the UK, a decision on the future of the use of AstraZeneca for younger people is expected this week. And the stakes couldn't be higher. This memorial wall just opposite the Houses of Parliament, a heart for every COVID victim, showing how important it is that lives are saved from this virus. Well, we're now joined by Professor uh, Callum Semple, who's a member of the SAGE Advisory Group. Professor Semple, should we be worried tonight that uh, AstraZeneca had to pause their uh, vaccine for children? No, I don't think we should. Uh, this has been done out of exceptional caution. And the big story still is that for a middle-aged, slightly overweight man such as myself, my risk of death is one in 13,000. The risk of this rare clot, which might not even be associated with the vaccine, is probably one in a million. So I'm still going to say that it's better to get the vaccine than not get the vaccine. And we can pause and take time to carefully consider the value for children because they're not at risk of death from COVID. We do recognize they do get some long COVID and we do recognize a rare inflammatory condition with children, but it's incredibly rare. And how many people die of blood clots normally? I, I don't have that figure at my fingertips, but far more people than that die of straightforward strokes. And this is a kind of stroke. It's a rare one, it counts for about 1% of strokes. There also is a, there's a spanner in the works here. Some people catch COVID around the time of vaccination, and this makes it incredibly difficult to tease apart causation 
and association. And one way of getting clots is to catch COVID. I think there's no question that what you've said tonight already is pretty comforting. But can you say any more to people uh, as they consider whether they should have the AstraZeneca uh, vaccine or not? If you've been called for the vaccine, then you're an age group that's very likely to benefit from the vaccine. So the bottom line is, if you've been called for the vaccine, I would urge you to take the vaccine. Now, we're reporting tonight the outbreak of this new variant in Brazil, and it's had absolutely dramatic impact on their figures. Should we be worried about, uh, you know, a third wave? And if we are, might it be springing from Brazil? Could it come here? I think there's justifiable reason to be cautious and to have reasonable worry about a third wave. In fact, most modelers and epidemiologists expect there to be a bump round about July, August. That's not going to be a surprise. I don't think we should be worrying excessively about it coming from Brazil or anywhere else, because at present, the, the major strain in the UK is the, is the Kent strain. And in test tube studies, although there's reduced effectiveness for the newer Brazil strain, there's still probably good enough protection to mean that the majority of British people will be protected. So yes, I think there will be a third wave, consider it a bump in the road, uh, but I don't think we'll be expecting to see a very large third wave because of a new variant such as the Brazilian one. But one can never be sure. That's why we have to retain some degree of caution and people like myself and my colleagues keep a very close eye on what's happening. And irrespective of today's news, is there any way a bit more of a risk in vaccinating younger people? This, this is why there's the pause. If, if a population is at very, very low risk of severe disease from the disease itself, then you have to hold in balance the tiniest risk from the vaccine. Now, nothing is risk-free. When we say it's safe to cross the road, you look left, you look right, there's no traffic, you can still sprain your ankle crossing the road. So it's not risk-free, but it's safe to cross the road. I'd say the same analogy for this vaccine. I, I will stay and say this vaccine is safe, but absolutely nothing is risk-free. In the case of children, we've got time to look really carefully. But in case of adults, where we know this is a killer virus, take the vaccine.